great, now I have my purchase orders themselves, but not much is going to get done unless I get my $900 off to Century. So we're going to need to create a vendor deposit. So I can highlight the Century Furniture purchase order, click my vendor deposit button, or just right click and do new deposit to vendor. That brings us to our deposit, our vendor deposit window. And most of the information is already filled in for us. We've got our purchase order already listed. Century is our vendor. The invoice or deposit date is today's date, which is just fine. Design manager recognizes that Century charges me 50% of a deposit up front. So it's calculating that amount and defaulting the $900 for us. I could pay Century's deposit with a check if desired, or I could put it, charge it to one of my pre-configured credit card accounts, such as our American Express. I do like to point out that I'm not actually charging my American Express account by doing so. I'm simply indicating to Design Manager that I am paying via my American Express or will be shortly. The transaction description is entirely optional, but I find them to be an invaluable tool when I'm going back to look at accounting information that I may have entered in months or even years prior. And it could be something as simple as deposit on sofa frame. And if we click OK, we can now see our deposit entry right beneath our purchase order. Here's our transaction description, deposit on sofa frame, today's date, total amount, and even the, fa the fact that we did indeed charge it to our American Express card. Excellent. So now Century has their money uh, to begin processing their sofa frame order. Kravitz is going to start cutting that fabric and trim for us. They're going to ship it off to Century. Century is going to get all the materials and start fabricating that custom sofa for completion. At some point in the, uh, the near future during that process, we're going to begin receiving the final bills from Century and Kravitz. So let's go ahead and imagine that we could receive both of those, and we'll go ahead and enter them as well. Let's start with Kravit. So now that we've received our invoice from Kravit, I can right click and do new invoice from our vendor or just click the vendor invoice button. And this is our vendor invoice window. And again, most of the information is already filled in for us. We have our purchase order number filled in. Kravit is our vendor. Well, in this case, let's go ahead and pay Kravit with a check rather than our American Express card. Invoice number, you can enter that in if provided from Kravit. If one was not provided, we could use the purchase order number, today's date, or any uniquely identifying information. But let's say that Kravit gave us an invoice number. Invoice date, we'll just use today's date. Transaction description, again, optional, but I highly recommend them. Final bill for fabric trim. And now, all we need to do is to make sure the information we're putting into Design Manager matches the bill that we've actually received from Kravit. For example, let's imagine that um, our bill from Kravit was not $1,590, but an even $1,600, and that the fabric came in a little higher than we imagined. Well, we can make that change quite easily. We simply select the sofa fabric on our purchase order components grid, click the edit button, and just change the cost of the merchandise from 1190 to an even 1200. And now we can see that our cost on invoice increases as well, as does the entire total, subtotal, and amount due. Now that um, our bill from Kravit matches what I'm entering into Design Manager precisely, we just have to click OK to record the vendor invoice. And there it is. And we have our invoice number listed, transaction description, today's date, and the total amount of the invoice. Let's go ahead and put one in for Century as well. So we can right click on our Century purchase order and do new invoice. And we're back to our vendor invoice window. Again, we have our purchase order listed. Century is our vendor. Let's imagine that Century didn't give us a invoice number. I'll go ahead and use the purchase order number in that case. 
today's date, transaction description, final bill on sofa frame. We will also pay Century via check in this case. And now, let's look at our purchase order component grid and let's imagine that the cost of the sofa frame was indeed $1,800, but there is an additional shipping charge of $200. We can put that in as well. Go back to our edit button. We'll leave the merchandise cost at $1,800. We'll change our freight or shipping to $200. And now our cost on invoice increases. And as does our subtotal, notice here is that $900. Design managers recognizing that we recorded that $900 deposit on our American Express and is giving us a final amount due of $1,100. And as that does match the bill in my hand from Century, click OK. And we have that vendor invoice recorded as well. So under Century, we have the original deposit and the invoice. Great. We have the bills in, but I certainly imagine that uh, both Crowd and Century would like us to actually uh, send them some checks. So let's hop off documents and accounting and we'll go to our third area of pay bills and checkbook. And on our checking window we can still see on our pay bills print checks grid. These are all of the invoices or deposits that we've entered that I have not yet created a check for or otherwise indicated payment. And in fact here is our $1,100 bill for Century and our $1,600 bill for Kravit. To create the checks, just select each one and hit the checks button along the bottom of the grid. On our check run window, if I had multiple checking accounts, I would select the desired one on my checking account menu. I have a single account. And if we select it, we can see Design Manager gets and crafts the next numerical checks check 10,008 for Century and 10,009 for Kravit. From here, I click my Print Post button and I get to the Print Check window. Now in this case, um, I would have my check forms and Design Manager gets all of its check forms along with other documents from uh, NELCO, uh, NELCO and uh, upon getting my NELCO forms, I would put them into my printer if they're not already uh, in that uh, device and click the OK button. And now we can see a print preview window of the check form itself. And the format that I selected from Nelka was the middle check format, which would have the check itself in the middle of the document and a stub at the top and at the bottom. One for ourselves and one for Century and Kravit. So here is our check for Century Furniture for $1,100 and our check for Kravit for $1,600. And now I would actually print onto our check forms. As the printing uh, completes, I make sure everything looks accurate. All my information is correct. There was no uh, problems with the printer. And if everything came out properly, just like our other documents, close the print preview of the check window and be sure to accept them. And now our entries for Kravit and Century have dropped off our pay bills print checks and we can review them in our checkbook register in the future. And that really sort of concludes our work with the vendors.